I clicked record, so it's being recorded. We're going over SIS today, um, mock exam questions and answers. So once I go through the answer, or sorry, the questions, if you guys don't mind typing in the chat box what your answer is, I like to see how people are doing. I don't keep track, it just kind of helps. We might even be done a little bit earlier today. I know it's Sunday, a nice day, hopefully for all of you. It's a nice day here. So I don't wanna keep you guys too late. I don't mind, I'll be doing tutoring prep all day, but <laughs> that's usually my Sundays. Okay guys, let's have some fun here. First question, and while you guys are answering, I'm gonna look up some x-rays and images for you. What is true about a radicular cyst? Here are the answers. Is it associated with a non-vital tooth, with a vital tooth? It develops where there is no tooth or not a well-defined shape. So this is where you would have need, you need to know the different types of cysts. You don't have to study paragraphs upon paragraphs about the cysts but pick out the key terms for each one, make a note of it, do a chart, whatever helps you learn, and that would help you answer this question. And I'm going to show you guys um, some x-rays on it afterwards. And also, sorry to interrupt your thinking, for those of you who are new, feel free to type in the chat box anytime if you have questions, anything, comments. You don't have to wait until the end. Type in the chat box anytime. I do that so I can see, um, I can see right away. What do you guys think? And thank you guys for answering. That's great. You guys are quick today. And if you haven't studied cysts yet, it's going to be hard for you to answer any of these. That's okay. It's still a good practice. It's still a good review. So don't think you don't want to attend a live class if you haven't studied a topic yet. It just means you can take notes and this will actually make it easier for your studying later on. So there's a method to my madness, you know, there's different ways to study, always mix it up. Okay, guys, so the answer is A. It is associated with a non-vital tooth. That is truly the key here. And what I want to show you is, um, I'm, I just picked an x-ray here, but the first one wasn't correct. Ah, here it is. So this is just kind of an example. You can't really... In an x-ray, you don't know if a tooth is vital or non-vital necessarily because as a dental professional, you cannot diagnose. But it's pretty obvious when there's a root canal in it that the tooth isn't alive. So that's a little trick for you guys. If on the exam you see an x-ray where there's a cyst, a cyst around a root canal, that tells you it's a non-vital tooth. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a ridiculous cyst because there are other cysts out there, but that would be a good educated guess. Does that make sense? So it's not associated with a vital tooth. There would always be a tooth where the cyst is. There are cysts that develop around places where there's no tooth there. So it would not be this type of cyst. Um, and it's always a well-defined shape. Most cysts are though, okay? So does everybody know how to see cysts? Um, if you don't, please comment and I can talk about it a little bit, but just a quick recap. Um, a cyst is a radiolucent area, means black, a radiopaque um, white, circle around it, if that makes sense, this is a cyst. If it's hard for you to see a cyst, don't worry. I promise you it takes practice. When I first started as a dental professional, like 16 years ago, I would look at x-rays, have no clue what I was seeing. Now I can just point it out and say, you see this big kind of circle there? That's a cyst. Notice how you don't see one here. You don't see one there. You don't see one here. That's an obvious cyst. Um, Lauren, so does that help you? You will see more throughout the session today. So it's good to kind of practice, but that is a cyst, not good. 
A little side note, as a dental professional, you cannot say to a client, oh, you have a cyst there. Let me go get a dentist right away. That's what I do because I feel, com oh, whoops, did I just take the x-ray away? Oh, sorry, guys. Um, I do that because I feel confident, but I'm really not supposed to do that. As a dental professional, you're not allowed to diagnose. What you can say is, I took the x-ray. I'll be right back. I'm going to get the dentist. If you want to point something out, you could say, you see this black area here? I'm going to point this out to, to the dentist because that's not typical of what we see. So do you guys see the difference between diagnosing and not? Oh, it's because I changed the slide, sorry. <laughs> do you guys see the difference there? But that's kind of another topic for another day. Okay, guys, next one. Where are radicular cysts, I might have said this already, often found? So we're still talking about the same type of cyst. And I'm going to show you guys a couple other x-rays to get you guys used to it. Where are cysts most often found? What do you think? And thank you guys for answering so fast. I hope this is an exciting session for you. I think learning is exciting, okay? I do really try to make it more exciting for you. There's nothing worse than just trying to read the textbook on your own. Been there, done that. When I was a student, worst thing ever. Or I'm sure you guys have these teachers in school where they will just read the PowerPoint or read the textbook and that's how you're learning. Horrible. You can't learn anything that way. <laughs> I know, right? I've been there, done that for sure. You guys are good. You're very, very fast today. This is perfect. So where are radicular cysts often found? They are found at the apex or lateral of the tooth. I have another x-ray for you here. Um, so does everybody understand the apices or lateral? So the apex means at the root of the tooth. The lateral is the side. So it's still closer to the apex, but it could also be off to the side. I'm sorry, I tried to find an x-ray where um, the cyst is more off to the side, but I couldn't seem to find one, but I'm sure I'll kind of find one as we go along. But just so you know, like it doesn't have to be specifically at the apex, like this is showing, it could be off to the side as well, but more often you will see it at the apices, so the root of the tooth. Is everybody good with that so far? None of these other answers apply because it would not be distal to the tooth it would not be around a tooth that's not through the gum line yet. Um, and it's not in a, in a place where there is no tooth. Please don't hesitate to stop me though. If there's any questions, there's no such thing as a stupid question. I truly feel that way. So for those of you who are new, ask me questions anytime. If, even if I've been explaining something and you're still kind of like, um, Andrea, I still have no idea what you're talking about. Just comment and I can probably explain it in a different way for you. So now we know all about or all that you have to know about a radicular cyst. OK, do you guys remember from the last slide here? So it is a non vital tooth and it's typically around the apices or the lateral of a non vital tooth. Honestly, that's all you have to know. Make a note right now that has saved you hours of reading a boring chapter. Ridiculous cyst. Okay, next one. What is true about a residual cyst? So this is a different cyst now. What is true about a residual cyst? Great question. Um, our next session is, I believe it's April 25th. If you're looking for our next sessions, I do them a month in advance for you guys, or I should say for that month, um, look under the events tab of the members only um, Facebook group of dental L tutoring. You will see it there because they do vary. Sometimes evenings, sometimes Sundays, I try to do a mix for you guys. Oh yeah, I was going to look for an x-ray really quick. So what do you guys think? What is true about a residual cyst? And feel free to take notes. Make your studying easier for you guys, okay? Take notes. 
If you're in the Board Exam Prep Academy, you will have this full PowerPoint. If you're in the Express Board Exam Prep course, you will not have this. You do have access to the session recordings for a certain period of time, but not forever. So feel free to take a picture of this if you want to keep it. That is absolutely okay. You guys are very quick today. I love it. And I'm finding some really good x-rays. Let's see. I think most of you guys got this right. Perfect. So it's where a tooth was extracted. I, oh, sorry guys. Sorry, sorry. Um, where is it? I found a really good x-ray for you. Um, where did it go? Okay where the tooth is extracted. So does that make sense to everybody? So there, there was a tooth there, but there's a cyst in that space. Can everybody see this? I'm just gonna make it larger. So, and this is great practice too, to really determine what is a cyst. It's basically a radiolucent circle. Sometimes there's a white kind of line around the circle um, that's very well defined, very obvious. Like I'll show you another one that's more obvious, but then sometimes it's not so obvious. To make it easy for you guys, look for a black circle. A radiolucent means black. Look for a black circle. See how in this one, um, there's more of a white line around it. So is everybody good with that? It's where a tooth has been extracted. Please make note of this. A lot of people get residual cysts and um, radicular cysts mixed up and they're very, very different. Is everybody good with that so far? Okay, next question. A different cyst, you guys. I know I'm mixing it up for you guys today. Where is a global low maxillary cyst often seen? Sorry if I pronounce that horribly. I'm also really bad with pronunciations. Wait till it's pharmacology, you guys. You guys will be laughing the whole session because I can't pronounce anything. <laughs> this one is a definite um, obvious one. You can't miss it. And I have a couple really good x-rays for you guys. You guys are very good. You're doing a great job today. I'm very impressed. And by the way, don't worry about getting the answer wrong. It's not about that. It's just about this really will help you study. Even if you don't realize it, you trying to think of the answers, you constantly thinking, okay, we just learned about a residual cyst. We learned about a radicular cyst. So how is this one different? You thinking about that during our session is helping you study. Um, Ashley, hello. Thank you for answering. Um, Elaine, hello. Nice to see you guys. Thank you for answering nice and fast today. You guys are quick. Sevda, great job. You guys are pros today. Okay. Okay, guys. Perfect. So it's between the lateral and the canine. So I'll show you an x-ray here. So sometimes in an x-ray, if you're not used to seeing x-rays, you might honestly not know which is the lateral and which is the canine. This tooth doesn't look like a canine to me. I wouldn't know when I first saw it, but I would be looking at, okay, this is a pretty big tooth here, probably a central. So if you see in the exam x-rays where it's between, so there's a cyst between the teeth, um, that will be a global maxillary cyst, okay? It's not always between the lateral and the canine, but like 90% of the time it is. So I tried to find another x-ray for you that it wasn't between the lateral and the canine, but they're really hard to find. So I couldn't see it. But if you see a cyst between the lateral and the canine, I guarantee you it's going to be a global maxillary cyst. So make a note of that. Is everybody good with this one? Okay, next question. What is true about a non-odontogenic non cyst? <laughs> what is true about this one? A non-odo, non oh gosh odontogenic cyst. Listen, it's Sunday. <laughs> I 
I actually kind of slept in today. So it's pretty funny that doesn't ever happen. I guess I was just really tired. So what is true about this one, you guys? What do you think? I'm looking up x-rays for you as we speak. This one's harder to find an x-ray, to be honest. Oh, actually, not so bad. Oh, I don't know if I like that. No, this one's good. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm thinking out loud. There we go. I like this one. What do you guys think? Even if, let's say you had no clue, think about what you've learned so far. You know it's not going to be, well, no, sorry. I don't want to give you guys the answer yet. So I'll give you guys the answer when I go over the answer slide, okay? <sighs> sorry for yawning. Yawning is contagious, so I wonder if anybody else just yawned right now. <laughs> Very good, you guys. This is kind of a trickier one. Okay, let's talk about it. So all teeth are vital, okay? This is true. So it wouldn't be near a root canal, if that makes sense. So the next one, always in place of where a tooth or teeth were extracted. Well, that's not true because it is in the place of a tooth, or there is a tooth there, okay? Only in root canal teeth, well, that's not true because a root canal tooth means it's non-vital. Only in the maxillary, not true. It could be the maxillary, mandibular, it doesn't matter. More often they are seen in maxillary teeth, but not all the time. So this would be a good answer, but this is the better answer because it's always in vital teeth. Does that make sense to everybody so far? Yeah? Um, I do have some x-rays, but let me just check the next question. Did I ask you another question? Okay, no, I didn't. Okay, so with these x-rays here, it's basically a cyst. It can be any cyst where it's around a vital tooth, to be honest. So I did find one here where it does happen to be the maxillary. Um, it's very difficult to see this cyst. You, you can see it more the white line around it, um, but this is the maxillary, okay? But obviously it wouldn't be normal to see that circular lesion there. Um, the other x-rays, of course, oh, this one's in a mandibular tooth. I, I don't wanna confuse you guys to think it's only the maxillary, so that's why I'm kind of doing this. There we go. Oh, sorry, this is not, the best x-ray, it's kind of blurry, but at least you guys can see it could literally show up anywhere. So it's kind of a more generic term, okay? Is everybody okay with that? So let's say you saw um, on the exam, they're showing you radiographs like this and you need to determine what type of cyst it is. Kind of put in the back of your mind, if you don't know the answer, a non, odontogenic cyst is around vital teeth. So you wouldn't say this is a global maxillary cyst because it's not in between the teeth. So you know it's not that one. You wouldn't say it's a, a radicular cyst because that would only be around a root canal tooth. And remember the other one we talked about, the residual, that's where there's no tooth there, okay? but there are teeth there, there's no root canals, so it's, a, it's around vital teeth, non-odontogenic cyst. Okay, it's kind of a generic term, but just to help you guys take your notes. Okay, next one. I know there's so many cysts. Where are dermoid cysts located? And I'm finding good x-rays for you guys as, I, as you guys are answering. Where are dermoid cysts located? When in doubt, think about what you learned and kind of decide, okay, it couldn't be this, it couldn't be that. Ew, I'm trying to look up um, this cyst and it's not showing me x-rays, it's showing me really disgusting parts of the mouth. Oh, having that said, you guys, don't Google these cysts during our session because that's not going to help. I mean, you will find the answer, but that's not going to help you. This is meant to really make you guys think, okay? 
I mean, you can look up the cysts if you want while we're answering, but that doesn't really help you guys learn. My teachers would always say that too. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But it's really true, you guys. I actually can't find very good x-rays. I know this one's kind of, there's a couple correct answers, you guys, okay? There's a couple correct answers here. So I'm gonna help you guys with the best answer. A lot of different answers here. So I can tell this is a trickier one. Okay, let's talk about it. Where's my mouse? There we go. So it is the floor of the mouth. Um, a is not correct because it's more specific to the floor of the mouth. So a dermoid cyst is the floor of the mouth. It could be any cyst really. This is a more generic term again, but the floor of the mouth is the best and correct answer. The root of the mouth, how I, how I want to say it is what does that mean? There is no anatomy term of root of the mouth. There's just not. So C is not correct. It's not in the dermis of the skin. Um, I put that in there because I thought that might confuse some of you guys. You might be looking at the question and saying dermoid cyst. Oh, well, that kind of sounds like it could be in the dermis of the skin. Well, it's not. The floor of the mouth, you guys. Is everybody good with that? I tried to find an x-ray. They're not really showing me x-rays. They're just showing me really disgusting images. Let me find one that's not too bad. Ew, like I can't even look at these, you guys. They're really gross. Okay, I'm gonna find you. I'll just show you one that's a little, ew. <laughs> I should really look at these before I do the session, shouldn't I? So you see how it might not show up on the computer, I apologize, but in the PowerPoint, it will. You see how there's like a swelling here? This is the floor of the mouth, totally not normal. They have a dermoid cyst, okay? Floor of the mouth. Next question. Where are odontogenic keratocysts often seen? There's a million cysts. These are the ones they would commonly ask on the board exam. This one's a good one because it's definitely very obvious. What do you guys think? I have a couple different x-rays and it's also more of a generic term as well. So ew, I'm finding some really disgusting pictures again. So I will explain this after a few more of you answer. Um, yes, what is our next session? I think I said it's anatomy. Um, yes, our next one is anatomy because it's actually been a while since we've done an anatomy session. I didn't realize that I was looking for our past sessions um, just to see like which topic I should talk about next and anatomy has been a while so I apologize I don't know how that happened. Um, but anytime like if you guys want to study a certain topic and it's not in our 2021 session recordings yet just go into 2020. If you're in the board exam prep academy, you have full access to all of our session recordings from 2019, 2020, and then of course, 2021. So look at our past sessions. You will find a ton. If you're in the express course, you have limited access for, sorry, I have to double check, 30 or 60 days. I might've changed that because of COVID. So, but you have limited access to them. But that's what the Express is, is all about. It is meant for quick studying. You have maybe a month to take the board exam. That's what the Express is for. The board exam prep is full on everything. You guys are very fast today. This is great. You guys are awake. The mandibular posteriors. What do you guys think? I know, pretty cool, eh? <laughs> I was trying to find a better x-ray for you. Let's see. Um, this is a good one. I'm finding a lot of panoramic x-rays there. So this is really quite often what it looks like. Um, I'm going to point it out to you. So look at the mandible. 
see how big that cyst is. So it wouldn't often be like a little cyst on the bottom. It would be a big cyst over a couple teeth. This is called a odontic keratocyst, okay? And anything from the premolars back is considered, an, I'm sorry, posterior, okay? The anteriors are the centrals, laterals, and canines. In case you didn't know that. Um, I didn't know that when I was a student and I remembered getting it very confused. I always thought that the posteriors meant the molars, um, but it's kind of further back. So some of you guys might be thinking if you didn't know that, oh, well, it's kind of close to the premolars. Why is this considered an odontogenic caro cyst? Well, the premolars and molars back. Is everybody okay with that? Please stop me if you're not. I am absolutely happy to explain things further. Okay. What cysts can be seen around the crown of an uninterrupted wisdom tooth? Ha ha, getting very specific here. What cysts can be seen around the crown of an uninterrupted wisdom tooth? So it's further back, but it's around the crown not the roots of the teeth that we have been seeing. So always pay attention to those key words. Oh, I found a really good x-ray. I get excited when I see good x-rays. You guys are very good. Now, those of you who have answered so far, are you just taking a guess or did you know that? I'm just curious. Because <laughs> you guys are doing very well. Oh, you guessed. Actually, I think, I think everybody guessed. <laughs> You're kidding. You guys are pretty good then. Okay, let me talk about it. It is the dentigerocyst. I know I pronounced that one wrong, but here is a great x-ray and I'm going to point out the cyst again, like just to help you guys get used to it. Sorry about the quality of the x-rays. They're not mine, obviously they're from the internet. You see this big black area here, you guys? So the key terms here are crown of an uninterrupted wisdom tooth, meaning it's still underneath the gum, you can't see it. There's a big cyst there. What you need to tell your patients, if they have uninterrupted wisdom teeth, we can leave them alone, but it's more common to get cysts. So they will want x-rays, a panorex specifically, probably once every five years to make sure there's no cysts present. Not that you have to get the wisdom teeth removed if they're uninterrupted. I actually tell my patients you don't have to, but let's take the x-ray, the panorex to really know for sure. Um, but just so you know, it's more common to get cysts around uninterrupted wisdom teeth. Just kind of side notes, you know, as you're talking to your patient, waiting for your check um, while you're explaining x-rays to them, I love to explain x-rays to patients, which is funny because having my own business, I can't take x-rays anymore. So I just have them get the x-rays from their dental office, but I love to explain things to them. Yeah, but I think everybody got that right anyway. Okay, next one. What best describes a ranula? What best describes a ranula? So you guys do have to know this. I'm gonna look for a good picture right now. They love to ask this on the exam. Ew, really gross pictures again. Gosh, I wish they would stop doing that. <laughs> and apparently it's more common than people think. Yeah, a lot of my patients lately seem to have had them in the past, yet I've never seen one in the mouth in my 16 years. But lately patients are telling me, oh yeah, like I had this, oh wait, I can't really tell you the answer because then you're gonna know the answer. <laughs> oh goodness. You guys are very good. This is definitely a thinker though. So please read all of the answers and then let me know what you decide. Let 
Very good, you guys. A blockage by a salivary stone in the duct of a major salivary gland. The best and only answer. Um, so can everybody see this? It's pretty obvious. They're not usually this big, um, but this is what it looks like. It could be smaller or it could be big, but they just simply have to drain that. So yeah, apparently that's what they do. So this is where oral cancer screenings are important. I'm sure your patient would have known this is there, but sometimes if it's really tiny, they might not know. It's under the tongue on the floor of the mouth. Any questions about that, you guys? A and B are correct, but it's more common a major salivary gland, okay? Please know this, they love to ask it on the exam. Okay, what causes necrotizing sialometaplasia? What causes this? I just like to make you guys laugh on a Sunday morning with my horrible pronunciations. What causes this, you guys? What do you think? Ooh, some other really gross pictures, which I will show you. Oh, actually a couple different answers here. I thought this was an easy one, to be honest. But I guess if you haven't studied this yet, then makes sense why you wouldn't. I'm definitely going to talk about this. Definitely going to talk about this to explain it, because I don't think anybody has the right answer yet. Oh, maybe somebody does but most of you do not. Okay, let's talk about it. Okay, you guys. So it's a lack of blood supply to the area, basically. Um, I know it's very generic, but that's just truly what it is. So how do you get a lack of blood supply to any area? Can somebody tell me like any ideas of how this happens? It's not caused by eating certain foods or too much sugar or too much acidity. It's caused by other things. Why would you get lack of blood supply to certain areas? Any guesses? And you don't have to have the right answer, just sort of guess. Um, type in the chat box and let me know your thoughts. This might not even be in the textbook. Like this is critical thinking type of questions where you won't see you will get lack of blood supply to the area by this. So this is critical thinking for you guys, which I like you guys to practice critical thinking. So this is a great example. Yes, so basically by some conditions, if you have diabetes, your blood circulation might not be as thorough as other people's. Um, I have always been told I have poor circulation. I don't have diabetes, but well, at least not yet. I will probably get it because I eat horribly, um, but poor circulation, those that have poor circulation. If you bruise easily, it might be harder for you to get blood supply or sorry, it's kind of the opposite, but your body just doesn't work as it should. Smoking is a great example. Lack of blood supply to the area, such as smokers. Um, they might not bleed as much during a cleaning appointment because there's not as, as much blood supply there because smoking hinders that. So does that help you guys out a little bit? Just basically lack of blood supply to the area. That's all. Um, here's a great example. So this is from a smoker basically, but I suppose a non-smoker can get this too. Just basically, if you see something like this in the mouth, it's not good, but the next question could be, what caused that? Well, you could say, well, lack of blood supply to the area caused that, but what caused that? It could be from smoking. It could actually be drinking alcohol as well, but it's not usually just drinking alcohol. It could be drinking alcohol and somebody who's diabetic or drinking alcohol and smoking. So that would actually be a good answer as well. B is a correct answer, but D is more correct because that's more specific. Does everybody understand why D is the better answer here? B is correct because that would cause lack of blood supply, but you need to know what that's caused by. 
I know it takes practice. But last question, time actually went by really fast today, at least for me. What does a simple bone cyst look like? So these are the common cysts that I want you guys to know for the board exam. You don't have to go crazy and honestly know all of them. In my opinion, still look through them if you want, but these are the common ones that if they're going to ask, they will ask unless they completely decide to mix up um, their exams and not do what they've done in the past but these are the more common ones. What does a simple bone cyst looks like? And I'm trying to find x-rays, but it's actually kind of hard because they're not showing me correct bone cysts. Hmm. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Good job, you guys. Even if you don't know the answer, take a guess. It's perfect. It's really nice to take a guess. Very good guesses, by the way. Okay, so the answer is radiolucent projections between roots. So black projections between roots. It's very hard to find an x-ray on that. So I apologize for some reason, it's not showing me any good ones, but just basically think between the roots, okay, of teeth. So let's see. I'm just trying to find any x-ray right now that's showing a cyst between the roots, just so I can kind of lead you guys but there's um uh, maybe kind of found one but not really to be honest okay this is at least something i can point out so radiolucent projections i wouldn't really consider this a projection but you can at least see see how it's between the roots of the teeth it even has an arrow showing you guys here i'll make it bigger it's between the roots and it's black not the best one, but this is kind of just showing you. So it would not look like here. Let me actually show you some of the other slides. So think simple bone cyst, radiolucent projections between the roots. It would not look like this because it this is a clear, well-defined circle along one root. It would not look like this either because it's a clear circle. It is between two teeth at the roots, but it's too well defined, okay? This one, it's more like radiolucent projections between the roots. So it's not a well-defined circle. It's, it's more like a, a triangle shape almost between the roots. It would not look like this where it's covering multiple teeth because this is still well-defined, I would say. It does not look like this where it's again well defined is everybody okay with that so if you're taking notes you can say a simple bone cyst is radiolucent projections between roots not well defined so have that in there not well defined if on the exam it says what cyst is not well defined well then you know a simple bone cyst between the roots though it's also a key thing to point out between the roots is everybody good with that? Does that make sense? I don't want to confuse anybody. And since I couldn't find a very good x-ray. So that was really good timing. I don't know how I do it. I thought we'd, we'd be done early. We're done five minutes early, but that was still pretty good timing. Does anybody have any questions about the cysts or any, I guess, like dental studying questions overall? It doesn't have to be about cysts since we're done early. Our next one will be about anatomy, um, going through anatomy. Anatomy usually takes a couple sessions because I'll talk about head and neck anatomy probably for one session. I'll talk about muscles for another session. I'll talk about oral facial anatomy. So like teeth anatomy, like 
what the laterals look like, the molars, how many cusps, that kind of thing. So we'll probably do three sessions about anatomy, but it's great to learn. It's a lot more exciting, I hope, correct me if I'm wrong, to learn a topic this way than it is to just read through your textbook, right? And when you guys study inside the course, please don't get overwhelmed. There is a lot of materials inside the course, but it's because I want to offer you guys different materials. I don't want you to think, okay, I'm going to study anatomy today, and then there's one PowerPoint. That's not going to help you guys. You don't have to study all the PowerPoints at once. Take your time, mix up the topics that will help you. It's kind of like school. If your instructors gave you all the classes, all the notes, all the textbooks at once, you would be overwhelmed. You do have to know all of it. But that's why there's modules, there's semesters, there's exams. But with tutoring, I don't want to give you like anatomy one week and then oral pathology the next week because some people like to study in advance. Some take your time. Learn at your own pace. Absolutely. Um, learn at your own pace and mix it up with the studying. I do highly recommend going into our members only Facebook group. And if you're, you know, you want to study one day, but you might not feel like it. Listen to me talking is so much easier than reading something. So just go into the members only Facebook page. Um, you will see the links to our 2021 sessions, 2019 sessions, 2020 sessions, pick a topic and just listen to me talk. They are like these mock exams. So even if you're doing something else, like cleaning the kitchen, I say this a lot. If you're cleaning the kitchen, you can hear me talk. You don't necessarily like have to be paying attention to the screen the whole time, but then you might want to pause the video. If I'm going over a question and you're pausing it and thinking, okay, how would I answer that? You know, so it's up to you how you want to study. People ask me all the time, how should I study? How should I go through the course? It's truly up to you, but I do suggest listening to these sessions because it does help you. Um, indices and calculations. Are you referring to, um, sorry, for some reason your name's not popping, um, popping up. I apologize. That's weird. Um, are you referring to the community indices, like the, the perio index, the oral hygiene index? Okay. Yes. That's what I thought. I do have that. The question is where? <laughs> the question is where? Let me just do a quick search actually on YouTube right now. Um, I do have indices inside the course as well. It would be under community, I think. I apologize. I don't know. Let me look it up on YouTube right now. So thanks for bringing that to my attention. The nice thing you guys about the indices is Yes, you have to know them for the exam, but I would study that like the last week. Don't study it months in advance because you'll forget. It's all memorizing. I'm just going to my channel right now and doing a search under indices because that might be a members only video. So if you did a search for it, it might not pop up depending. So sorry, guys, I'm just checking right now. I actually don't see it, which is annoying because I know I have it. So what would I have called it? <laughs> this is the question. What would I have called it? Darn. Hey, if I have to do another one, I will because it has been a while. Let me search my computer. Let me search my computer. But in the meantime, does anybody else have any questions? May the 7th, you're taking your exam. Good luck. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's, I, I want to say it's not as easy as people think, but it's also not as hard as people think. Make sure to study for it, obviously, for your um, QA exam. So you're, you're, you're not talking about um, the board exam, right? You're talking about the QA exam. Yes. So the QA exam isn't as hard as the board exam, but study for it like you're taking the board exam. So this is perfect. And I'm sorry. Your name isn't popping up. Who had just asked me that question or um, who had just commented that your QA exam? Thank you, Ashley, thank you, sorry. Um, yeah, for some reason it just says blank, like from blank to me. Um, yeah, so study for it like the board exam. I'm telling you, those that lightly study for it um, fail, literally. 
So look inside your QA course that I have for you, study everything and listen to these sessions. This CIST um, session is perfect because this is all you would have to know if they ask you a CIST question on the QA exam. Don't waste your time reading the chapters on CISTs. You don't have to know that. For the board exam though, yes, if you're taking the board exam, briefly go through your CIST chapter, but don't spend hours memorizing it. Just go through what we learned today. Um, the QA exam, it stands for Quality Assurance Exam. Here in Ontario, we're so lucky. We get audited typically once every five to six years, if not sooner. I've been audited every five years like clockwork. So I've been audited like three times. Yeah, literally. Um, we get audited. So we have the choice to either submit our professional portfolio, showing all of the courses we have taken, writing about it. It's really ridiculous. Sorry, I said that. Probably shouldn't be recording this. But or we can take the exam. So called the quality assurance exam. It's kind of like a mini board exam. Um, okay. So, oh, sorry, Ashley, you would not have indices in your QA exam. I'm looking that up right now and I'm going to add something for you, but they don't typically ask, I shouldn't say that. They might've had one question on indices before, but it's not typical to have that. I almost want to say, do you have any textbooks, Ashley? You can look, actually, can I look in my textbook right now for you? I have my textbook on Kindle. Sorry guys, I'm talking kind of out loud to Ashley, but if anybody else has any questions, please let me know. I'm just doing a search on my Kindle right now. I did a search on my computer, just kind of looking up Kindle. I highly recommend, you don't need to buy the textbook again. In fact, please don't. If you do again, get the Kindle version because it's so much easier to look it up that way um Ashley sorry I'm just pulling up my textbook right now I'm doing a search for indices on Kindle it's so much easier oh 315 matches okay that's not helping me <laughs> let me quickly check sorry Ashley come on maybe if I put in like plaque score might Um, and sorry, guys, if anybody has any questions, type in the comments box and I promise to get back to you. I'm just checking. Well, that's annoying. I can't find it. Let me look under table of contents. Do, do, do. Let's see, because you know what, um, Ashley, I should have that in the quality assurance course. They don't typically ask about it on the on the exam, which is why I don't have it yet, but it can't hurt to just give you guys a quick slide on indices. Um, I am just having difficulty finding it. So I might search for that. And you know what? The calculations are confusing. I'm a dental hygienist like you. I cannot help you with the calculations any more than probably you can to be perfectly frank with you. I don't do math, it's confusing. I can help explain things for you, but that's one of the things where even I would have a hard time with it. Aha, I found the indices. Ah, okay, I see what you're saying. So just in case you guys are curious, let me share my screen right now and we can cry together of how confusing the indices are. Of course, it's in really small print. I'm sorry, how do I zoom in here? Ooh, this is good. Okay, that's as far as it goes. So Ashley, this is what you're talking about, right? The different indices. So like caries, gingivitis, bleeding, all of that, and how to do the calculations. So again, I'm being completely honest with you. I can't help you with them any more than you because I would need help with them. So I, I would memorize them. Um, I know, I'm sorry, memorize them. And if they ask you a question on the quality assurance exam, then you can at least try to work through it. They don't usually ask though, which is why I don't put it in the course because I don't want somebody to focus on this for two weeks 
when they've never asked a question. They might have asked one question. If you get it wrong, no big deal. Is it worth studying for three weeks for one question? Not in my opinion, but that's my true opinion on that one. Um, oh, yes, have fun in clinic. Thank you for coming. Ming Yu, sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Have fun in clinic. Good luck. Thank you for hopping on as always. You are always here. Good luck. This will be recorded, but we are done. I'm just answering questions right now. So um, Ashley, sorry, I'm sure that does not help you, but I wouldn't worry about it, okay? Just because if they ask you a question, it's gonna be like one question. If they ask you more questions, tell me, and I'll just have to learn it myself for the next time, but they don't usually ask. Does anybody else have any other questions? Oh, um, if somebody fails the QA exam, do they lose their license? No, nobody has failed it more than three times yet. So I don't even think they know what to do if that happens. People just don't fail it. Um, they do fail it, sorry. Um, I've had somebody fail it twice, but then they passed on their third attempt. I don't think anybody has failed it after three attempts. So I don't even know what happens. I don't even think they know. People ask me that all the time and I tell them just don't fail. <laughs> if you failed once, because I do have a lot of people who come to me for the QA course after they have failed once, I say, well, this will help you pass. So study it, do what I tell you and you'll be fine. You will be, honestly. So study, study, study. Does anybody else have any questions about anything? Our next one will be anatomy. Exciting, right? And yes, this will be recorded. The recording will be up by this evening. So you guys um, in the members only Facebook group, quality, quality assurance members, I don't believe you guys have access to that unless you signed up for the additional um, dental hygiene review video. So then yes, um, Ashley, you have access to it. Um, but the recording will be up if you guys need it. If for some reason you aren't in the private Facebook group, please re um, request to join again because it might have just been an oversight. Good. I am very happy to help. That's why I'm here. You guys have a great Sunday. Enjoy this nice weather. It's really nice out. I don't know if it's warm today, at least in my area. We did get a lot of rain last night, but it's really nice. I'm checking the weather right now. It is a high of 16. Hey, that's nice. I'll take it. Rain tonight, at least in my area. <laughs> so enjoy it today. Thank you guys so much. You are so welcome. It's my pleasure. Have a great Sunday. You, you guys all did awesome. And now you know all about cysts. Easy peasy for a Sunday. Have a great day, you guys. Thank you. Bye.